It is uh, Friday, February 21st, and I have been going through this. I, I started talking about this last week, I think, but this um, ragtime revival, reliving stuff and remembering how I first came to playing ragtime guitar. And I think um, I got a few things to talk about, but it's going to be kind of short. We're heading out of town for the night. Um, but uh, one of them is I'm, I'll get back to the ragtime story. Let me tell you the first the first piece of big news is I want to welcome the people that have joined us for camp. I, I put a list up. We got so we have 17 people signed up and uh, hoping to get to about 25 or 30. And so if you're thinking about it, there's still room and um, recognizing a lot of old faces and names there. So anyway, uh, camp, I'm actually, we're actually heading up into the hills today, not into the hills, but over to Asilomar, the site of last the last three camps. But we'll be over in uh, Pacific Grove and Monterey for uh, just a little weekend getaway. But um, anyhow, so that's kind of the, the one thing I want to talk about. Actually, while I'm starting to talk about things on the forum, I'll get there first. Then I'm going to go into a whole story about ragtime and what it meant to me and why it's why it's uh, still so near and dear to my heart. But with some, with some uh, visual aids here, things I just dug up because I was going through boxes looking for stuff. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing is the question that came up on the forum, I will try to get to over the next couple of days, uh, great question about how Ledward Kaapana does this really razzle-dazzle technique in uh, Radio Hula. So uh, I had a quick chance to listen to it, but really not to break it down yet and see, what I, see if I can explain what's going on there, but that's on my, on my list of things to do. Um, anyway, as I mentioned last week, now into the ragtime story. Here was the first thing. The first thing that really got me on it was this. You've heard me mess with this before. Yikes. Dallas Rag that again uh, came into my world because of a, a student who wanted to try to learn it. I've, I've, I've told this story before, I'll make it really short though. Somebody walked into the store I was teaching at with two songs he was trying to learn. That was one of them, Dallas Rag from Stefan Grossman's book Contemporary Ragtime Guitar and Lady Nothing's Toy Puff, neither of which I was familiar with at the time, but they both changed my life. And uh, so anyhow, that set me on a couple of years uh, getting finding out more about Stefan Grossman, who had some albums out. Wait a minute, I think I have one of these things here. Well, let's see here. One thing that was cool about Stefan Grossman and some of his stuff was that you could buy tab books for it. So first I went into a store to try to find some Stefan Grossman records. Ended up with a record by a guy named Stephen Grossman. It wasn't the same thing. I took it home, played it, and I thought, wait, there's no ragtime guitar on this. Different guy. Um, but Stefan was... Uh, very instrumental, so to speak, in the ragtime guitar revival. They came on just on the heels of the, the f ragtime, the real first ragtime, second ragtime revival, started in 1970, when Joshua Rifkin recorded an album for the Nunsuch budget classical guitar label called Scott Joplin, Piano Rags, that included the Entertainer, Original Rags, Maple Leaf, some of his earlier pieces, and then over the next couple of years, did a few more. That, of course, led to Marvin Hamlish becoming familiar with this stuff and using his music for the movie The Sting three years later, 1973. Coincidentally, same year that that movie came out, using Mike Oldfield's music. Anyway, I think, very important year in, in a lot of regard, respects. So, um, anyhow, uh, then, in, uh, over those next couple of years, 74, 75, Grossman started this label, Kicking Mule Records, with Ed Denson. And I talked a little bit about this recently or last week. Um, that put out these fabulous albums by guitar players nobody had ever heard of. And they made all the tab available. And there were two that really knocked me out. One was this guy. They were both Dutch players. Tom, I'm not sure of pronunci pronunciation of his name, Tom Van Bergic. Uh, he, did a, he did an arrangement of original rags, Scott Joplin's piece. Um, and this, oh, magnetic, what was the other one? Oh, Red Pepper Rag was another one in Scott Joplin's book, Contemporary Ragtime Guitar, that was impossible to play. 
But uh, so this was a really um, important book to me, along with some of the others. And so because I've been working on The Entertainer, which I mentioned last week, save that one for later because that's kind of an even weirder thing that was, in, that was stuck in this same, same thing. They had an album called The Entertainer that had, that, that had a, ver different, a bunch of different artists doing one song or another. I believe Heliotrope Bouquet is from that, the version you know, that I modified over the years. Yeah, Heliotrope was from this. And I can't remember the guy's name who did it. Tom something, I think? Let me look. Page 15. Oh, no, Jim McLennan. Yeah. So this was what I based my version on. And I probably took 80% of what Jim did and then fixed a few things. And as you, as I might, as I mentioned last week, um, I'm now trying to perfect my version of The Entertainer. It's getting so close and I've, uh, I actually have everything organized. Now I just have to learn how to get, get to where I can play through the whole thing. It's really hard, it's really hard, but it's got some cool stuff in it. Drop D tuning, last week I did everything in drop D, this week I'm not doing that. So um, anyway, so that's what's going on. I'm, I'm still working on this, this arrangement of um, The Entertainer and I am completely happy right now. Last week I couldn't say this. There were all kinds of parts that were just bugging me. They were either not sounding very good or they were too hard to play, like impossible. And so I think I've solved all the issues and pretty soon, should only be another week or two till we've got uh, everything to where we can get stuff live and back on the web again, uh, get lessons back up. Anyway, so uh, here I'm looking at Leo's, Leo Vincamp's album that started off with The Entertainer. Tickle Her, St. Louis Rag, Buffalo Gals, Fig Leaf. Oh, his version of Fig Leaf was really good, as I recall. Let me see if I can fake my way through a little of it. Ah, drop D. I guess I do have to go. I should just go play the entertainer for you, but I'm not going to. Because I did want to talk about two other things that came out of this um, going through the archives, almost this time capsule that I found, which was this binder with five or five, uh, four or five albums worth of tablature to ragtime stuff, plus the three loose ones over there. And really important book, too. Happy Troms. Um, Guitar finger picking styles. Oh yeah, this has been seen so much so much wear and tear that it's it's fallen apart. And this is where I got versions of stuff that I've done on the site. Um, Deep River Blues is in here. Remember this one? Uh, uh oh, there we go. Anyway, the Doc Watson tune. Doc's guitar is in here. Um, and another one, uh oh, I guess I'm going to try to fake my way through something else here. Um, I think it was Eric Schoenberg. Let me see here. Yeah. Dill Pickle Rag. This is, this was like the last song in the book, which these things are typically graded from, you know, intermediate to impossible. And uh, Dill Pickle Rag was a piece that was com more commonly played by flat pickers than finger pickers. But, let me see if I can get through a little, oh man, there's a spot coming up, as if I recall. You've got to either play a chord, you either have to use your thumb, let me think about this, something like that, and then the thumb has to go to a different fret, or you have to make a bar across two different frets, where I've got the top part of the bar on the eight, eighth fret of the second string, and the lower part of the bar on the seventh fret of the sixth string. If I get that far, we'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll consider, we'll, we'll mess around with it a little bit. It goes something like this.
Oh, that hurts. Don't try this at home. Hang on a second. Time for a page turn. That's enough of that. I might have there. What, what else happens in? Wow! They stole a lick from. Recognize that? The Entertainer. keys of the same little thing. Oh, it's easy this time because the bass is open. picture here. Look at this. Uh-oh, this book is falling apart even worse. Let's see if people in there. Um, Mississippi John Hurt, Skip James, Elizabeth Cotton, and a few others. Can you see that? Pretty neat, huh? Okay, enough for ripping up my book anymore. The last thing I want to tell you about that I stumbled into in that same pile of stuff was an issue of Guitar Player Magazine. Now, this is from 1970... Six. It's pretty, and it looks like I bought it used, like I must have seen it at a used place, because I and bought it way after the fact. Of course, the list price on it was only a dollar, but I paid two ninety nine for it at Streetlight Records. Who knows when? But it looks like why I got it was there were three articles on the front page that jumped out at me. One was about Yorma Kalkinen, who was just talking to Ron Binding, one of our our IG Sears from way back who had gone to Yorma's camp in Ohio last summer. And uh, Yorma puts on a pretty cool finger-picking camp. Pretty much runs all summer. Most of them, I think, are like over weekends, Friday to Monday or something. Um, but of course, huge influence on, on me, as you probably know. And so he was, this was like the headline story. I, haven't, I just found this this morning, so I haven't actually read this again. But then there's an article about the Doobie Brothers, four guitar players in the Doobie Brothers, haven't looked at that yet either. And then there's an article on Ragtime Guitar from Stefan Grossman talking about these guys that he put on Kicking Mule back in 74, 75, that kind of stuff. And I think I sent him, I thought, you know, I would like to have a record on Kicking Mule. Anyway, Stefan and I had a few exchanges and uh, didn't go well. But you probably heard me rag on him before. I play that because it's another piece that jumped out at me just out of the blue on a record that was a duet album with Stefan Grossman and John Renborn. <laughs> tunes on it. Luke's Little Summer, um, uh, Looper's Corner. That, of course, was Bermuda Triangle Exit, a Stefan Grossman uh, solo that I have made almost all my finger-picking students learn at one time or another. They learn some classics. Everybody has to learn Angie, Judy, and that, and this. Uh, the last 
steam engine train. So a Bermuda Triangle exit is a uh, is another piece that I I don't remember if I have a lesson on that up at the site. Probably not. I should get to it. It's a great tune. Um, but the first thing I played was the opening tune from this album, the duet album with uh, Stefan and John, called "Snap a Little Owl," and that song also just uh, changed my world. It was so cool. I had to learn it, and somehow I got an advanced copy of the record. It was published, it was printed in uh, England first, and I think my local record store, the Galactic Zoo, was way up on imports, so they, this came through their channels, I think, and uh, they called me up and said, hey, we have our album here that you might be interested in, and it's, uh, you know, it's Stefan Grossman and John Renborn, and it's the British pressing, which meant the tablature was inside it. That's, this is around here someplace, but it's, it's a huge thing of tab the size of an LP. And uh, so it didn't even have, when it came out like a month or two later on Kicking Mule, you had to send away and for like five bucks or something you could get the, uh, uh, get the tab. Okay, uh, I think that is enough. Sorry, you can probably just tell I'm kind of excited about about uh, re-entering the world of ragtime and uh, playing, a, boy, it's even, even got me back to playing this. Not that it's ever far away. A year and a half ago when Muriel was here, I was having trouble with these harmonics. She said, just keep working on them. They'll stop, start sounding better. She's right, they sounded better now. Okay. That is it. I got to get out to Monterey. I'll uh, back next week with some who knows what. <laughs>